Hello and welcome back. So hopefully this is just going to be a real quick video. Um, what I want to do is just run through what I've been doing recently because uh, unfortunately there's not been that much progress in terms of actual physical things. Um, yeah, there's not been that much progress in terms of physical things. What I have been doing, however, is I've been going off designing uh, some boards. So let's just uh, pull up my board design here. This is KiCad, by the way. It's a fantastic open source piece of, um, it's open source software for um, electronics, uh, schematics, and uh, PCBs and what have you. There's a great course, there's a great introductory course by um, uh, Contextual Electronics, which I'll, uh, I'll link in below. They're like a, they're like a, um, a paid course for, uh, for electronics um, tuition, but they do a free course in KiCad, which is fantastic. I'll, uh, I'll drop that in down below. And if you're interested in, um, in doing any PCB design, I would highly recommend KiCad. You don't have, Eagle is really popular, but um, uh, yeah, Eagle's one of, the, one of the really popular ones. There are quite a few web-based ones popping up, but this has absolutely zero limitations. You don't have to share your files on GitHub or something automatically just by creating a project. And it's, uh, it's open source software, do what the hell you want with it or not. Anyway, a bit of a tangent. So I'm just gonna, let's just run through quickly uh, some of the boards I've been designing here. So the way I envision this working is that sitting next to, sitting um, around the screen, I'm gonna have three custom PCBs. So this one I've got here, uh, let me go into the 3D viewer. This one I've got here, this is gonna be for the D-pad switch. Now what I've done here is I have bought, I have ordered uh, and received actually, I've got a couple of um, four-way micro switches from Farnell. Yes, pretty sure they were Farnell. So they're gonna be used as D-pad up, down, left, right. And there is also a center click, but I don't really need to use that. What I haven't done with these D-pad switches, however, is I haven't tested whether or not you can have two uh, two switches connected at the same time. I don't see why not because you've got one common ground and one switch for everything else. So if I just uh, close that a second, we'll be able to see that here. So uh, let's just uh, zoom in a little bit. Here's our ground pin here. So what we can see then is that this uh, pin number four here, the ground is connected to, let me just turn off the uh, rear copper layer. No, yes, the rear copper layer. So uh, no, front copper layer. So what you're seeing here is the back layer of copper. So pin four here is connected to this uh, to this ground plane here, which is connected to here. And if I turn the front copper on, uh, well, also you can see that the pins six and five are connected down to this, uh, this row over here. Let's turn on the front copper. And then obviously we've got pins one, two, three hooked up here as well. So this one uh, obviously is going to be on the left-hand side. Um, I've got some... Um, I've got the little pins in here just to show, but uh, what I actually envisage in the real thing is I will be using right angled pins for this. Uh, well, no, in fact, in this, I won't, actu I won't actually, when I actually build this, I won't be using any pins at all. I'll just be wiring cables directly to these solder points. Um, pins take up a lot of space um, and I don't, I need this to be as small as possible. So that's the first board. Let's uh, have a look at the second one. Um, I haven't quite figured out KiCad yet, so at the moment all of these I've just got saved as separate project files, but uh, never mind. This board here, uh, let me go into the 3D view, it's probably a bit easier to see. So this board here, um, what I imagine this one is going to do is either sit above or below, uh, above or below the screen. Haven't quite figured that out yet. I think I need to actually have the physical boards in my hand and actually see just so I can see how this is all gonna all gonna hang together. But uh, this is either gonna sit above or below the screen. And as you can probably see there, we've got um, quit, button for quit, menu. Uh, we've got pause, insert coin, and start. Again, these all come over to this, uh, to this six pin 0.1 inch pitch connector over here. Um, again, I'm not gonna use pins. I'm just gonna wire directly to that. So. That's the second board. Let me open up the last one here. Now this last one, uh, I'm in the wrong program here. I need to go here and open a recent project, uh, the master board. So this last one, it looks a hell of a lot more complicated to start. So let's go in here for a moment. What I envisaged here is you probably noticed we've got this big 40 pin header here. What I envisaged 
was having the Raspberry Pi, having the Raspberry Pi Zero mounted directly on top of this. So if I just uh, switch back to the PCV, PCB view for a moment, uh, you can see here that I've got um, pin one. Uh, why can't I scroll in? Why can't I scroll in? Why can't I zoom? That's, uh, I can't zoom. Hmm, never mind. Uh, pin one over here. This is, um, in the, this is uh, all lined up properly with the GPIO connector. But um, yeah, so the idea was that we would have the Raspberry Pi just uh, sitting, actually, I think, no, I've designed this to go below, uh, to go below the, uh, the Raspberry Pi to solder onto the bottom. Even though you can see the pins on the top here, um, I've designed it to solder straight onto the bottom. So what we've also got then is we've got these uh, headers over here. Uh, you can't see any traces connected to those. It's because they're actually connected on the bottom. And uh, you've got another six pins here. Uh, those are going to be where the connections come in from the from the two other boards, one for the D-pad, one for the other six switches. So the plan was this is basically going to be a master board. Um, everything connects into this. What I thought the other day, however, is that right about, and hopefully I can... Uh, there we go, that's why I couldn't zoom, because I had the 3D viewer open. So the Raspberry Pi would be sitting like right up here. Uh, however, uh, and this is supposed to sit right next to the LCD. So the LCD is going to be here, going underneath the LCD. Then obviously we're going to have all these uh, all these connections going off to the daughter boards. But what I failed to realize, what I forgot at the time, was that on this side of the uh, LCD, on the right-hand side, you're also going to have all of the connections that you need for, you're going to have all the connections for the um, uh, for the video input for the power connectors on the LCD screen. So there really isn't going to be room for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off, I'm going to go off and redesign this slightly. So I'm still going to keep these two. Um, no, actually I'm not. Um, let me, uh, no. I'm not going to do that. So these pin headers over the side here are going to go. These holes, by the way, these are just mounting holes. Um, these are just mounting holes on the board. So uh, these pin headers are going to go away. I'm going to take that away. I'm also going to take away this power connector here because I won't need that anymore. And all this board is going to be is similar to the other ones. We're just going to have the six buttons left and then just another header over here. I'll actually, I'll probably put the header towards the bottom on this one. So I'm going to go off, redesign the schematic and, uh, I'll show you the new design. Okay, and welcome back. Right, what I thought I'd do, um, I won't go through all of this with you, but um, what I thought I'd do is just give you a um, bit of an idea of um, some of the frustrations <laughs> that I've had in designing this all the way along. So our schematic now, my schematic now has vastly changed. So all we've got is just this seven pin header here and six micro switches, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, so it's far, far simpler than it was before. What we can see here, though, is, for example, you've got button one connected to pin two, button two connected to pin three, and button three connected to pin four, etc., 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 etc. When you translate that, however, into a physical design, you can see some of the problems that you start to have here. So what I could potentially do, because what you can see, first of all, is these white lines here coming down here uh, show where the connections are actually supposed to be made. I don't particularly want to mess around with this layout because I've got this set out exactly how I want it, but I could potentially... Um, well, the, the reason I laid this out in the first place like this is because, first of all, that's physically how I want the buttons. Um, and, you know, you're gonna, and it's roughly going to be that kind of layout. So, you know, going left to right, top to bottom, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. But, as we can see, the connections are all over the place. So, when I'm going to start drawing traces down here, it's going to be an absolute nightmare. So... If, uh, let me try and demonstrate that here. So let's hook up um, pin six there, not a problem. Uh, sorry, switch number six there. So what we can see here now is switch number five needs to go down to pin six, easy. However, switch three, uh, to get switch three down there, look where the trace has got to go, it's ridiculous. Um, I could potentially draw it on the back, but what I've cut out is that on the back we've already got a ground plane, and I'd rather not mess around with all that stuff, um, because I'd rather not mess around with all uh, working out track widths and um, minimum spacing and stuff like that, so I'm just going to leave that ground plane as it is. So this presents a bit of a problem, so I'll go off and see if I can rearrange these buttons into a more 
Well, I suppose what I could do is I could just wire these up to any old pins that I like. When I run the electrical, the design rules check over here, it's going to tell me it's really going to complain. It's going to tell me you're, you've hooked these up in the wrong order. This isn't how you've set it up in the schematic, but I don't suppose that's really going to matter, is it? Um, or I could just physically move these buttons. I would rather not have to move them around because uh, you may be able to see down here, you've got these uh, distances and dimensions down here. These are in millimeters, and I've measured these out exactly according to where they need to go, and I really don't want to mess that up. So let's just try hooking them up to quote unquote the wrong pins. So we're going to take this one down here, and we're going to take the two pin two. Ah, no, you see, it won't let me connect it. It won't let me do it. Okay, fine. I'll uh, I'll do a little cut here, and I'll come back and just uh, go over the finished design quickly. Okay, there we go. That's a much more palatable layout. So what I've done basically is just moved all the buttons around here. So instead of having one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, we've just now got one, two, three, four, five, six, and it means I can get some nice, neat traces down here. So let me just uh, pull up the 3D viewer quickly. Before I do that, I'm just going to run one quick design rules check here. No problem at all. Excellent. Make sure I save it. Damn well, make sure I save it. So here we go. Again, it shows the pins on the top. I'm going to mount the pins that I'm going to solder directly from the bottom or from the top. Doesn't really matter. So. That is a much, much neater layout, and it's also a hell of a lot smaller, so it's probably going to cost me an awful lot less when I actually get this made. So, that's probably about enough for now. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go off and actually get these PCBs ordered. I can't remember how long it takes for Osh Park. I think you're talking about 12 to 15 days, maybe, so you're talking about two to three weeks, unfortunately. But, um, hey-ho, there are other parts I need to order as well, so this is this project now I'm just pretty much waiting for bits and pieces to come in here. Oh, I need to update my date here, and I also need to update my revision number because it's not revision 1 anymore, so I'm probably like 6 by now, but never mind. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, I've no idea how long I've been recording for, but hopefully this turns out to be a quick video. Um, thanks for all the uh, comments, new subscriptions, etc. Um, I really do appreciate it all, and uh, I'll catch you next time.